at some point of our lives, we have probably all wondered if we are alone in the universe. It would seem that in our own or in other distant galaxies, there are so many planets that revolve around numerous stars. So why have we still not encountered any traces of extraterrestrial life? But what if advanced alien life forms have been around for a long time and they're simply hiding? According to the dark forest hypothesis, technologically advanced civilizations outside of the solar system may already be thriving. However, they have no intention of making contact because they are either cautious of potential attacks from other civilizations, or they may be indeed preparing to attack. Today, you'll learn about the dark forest theory and why you should probably be afraid of being heard by someone in the vast cosmos. One, the dark forest hypothesis, the author and original source. The author of the dark forest hypothesis, DFH, is science fiction writer Lu Sashin. It's worth noting that this is not a scientific theory, and it's not based on any concrete evidence. In 2008, Liu Sushin published his successful fiction novel titled The Dark Forest. The Dark Forest theory was first outlined in this book. The gist of the theory is that every civilization on a cosmic scale seeks to obtain the resources necessary for its continued survival. Therefore, any extraterrestrial life hides in order to not be destroyed by another civilization, and also in order to be able to attack and ensure its own survival. So why is this theory called the Dark Forest Hypothesis? In his novel, Liu Sushin compares this to precarious coexistence to a forest inhabited only by hunters. The author paints civilizations as metaphorical armed shooters in a dark forest who silently move forward, afraid of being discovered by fellow hunters. If one hunter manages to find another, it's in their best interest to attack first before the enemy does the same. Based on this, we can name several ideas that are promoted by DFH. First one is that hypothetically, alien civilizations exist but they are in hiding due to the risk of being attacked by others and losing acquired resources, such as inhabited planets. Within the construct of the dark forest hypothesis, survival as the basis of every civilization is known as the chain of suspicion. This phenomenon is caused by insufficient communication, which leads to mistrust as a direct result. The second idea is that a civilization that gives away its location by actively transmitting, say, radio signals could be captured or destroyed by others for resources. The third concept is that fellowship in this type of system is exceedingly rare since every civilization strives above all to survive through expansion. However, a treaty is possible if the terms are beneficial to both civilizations. Lu Sashin represents the universe as a battlefield for limited resources, where an alliance is practically impossible. Finally, it's important to note that in Lu Sashin's hypothesis, these hunters are analogous to civilizations with a high level of technological advancement. Therefore, if any civilization is not sufficiently developed to announce itself in space, it will either go unnoticed or it may become easy prey. Two. DFH is an answer to the Fear Me Paradox. As you may already know, in 1950, famous physicist Enrico Fermi, when discussing the phenomenon of flying saucers with his colleagues, unexpectedly asked, where is everyone? Referring to examples of extraterrestrial life, which marked the beginning of the famous Fear Me Paradox. We discussed it in detail in this video on our channel. Fermi assumed that if our galaxy formed several million years before the birth of mankind, then it is possible that other civilizations could have emerged during this period, much older than Earthlings. Therefore, the Milky Way galaxy should be full of civilizations, which could pick up our signals due to their much more advanced technological development, 
as well as travel through the galaxy. However, so far we have not seen any traces of alien activity. Why haven't they visited Earth yet or come close to our planet? To determine the potential number of extraterrestrial civilizations that exist within our galaxy, the famous Drake Equation was derived in 1961. However, we cannot use it to learn why alien creatures have not left any signs of their life. Therefore, at the moment, the Fermi Paradox only has theoretical explanations. Additionally, according to physics professor Adam Frank, the probability that Earthlings are the only civilization in the universe is very small. 1 in 10 billion trillion, which is to say 1 times 10 to the 22nd. The professor suggests that our evolution was not unique and other civilizations could potentially have existed before us or even much longer before us. There are more than 70 hypothetical solutions to this issue, one of which is the Dark Forest Hypothesis. Of course, we cannot check the veracity of DFH due to our current technological limitations. However, Lu Xuxin's theory provides a logical explanation as to why we still haven't picked up a single alien signal or found any clear signs of life on other planets. It's simply dangerous for other civilizations to betray their location for fear of invasion. Although this hypothesis presents very clearly defined ideas, the DFH still has some inaccuracies. For example, if other civilizations exist, then they must differ from ours when it comes to the level of development due to different periods of origin, as Fermi pointed out. This means that there may be civilizations of our technological level or higher that actively search for alien life or study their own systems just like us, because they don't see it as a threat. Therefore, we may not be the only ones sending signals out there, because civilizations do not necessarily develop in fear of detection if they have not experienced confrontation. Three, more about the assumptions of dark forest hypothesis. The idea of capturing other territories and the possible destruction of the first civilization on a cosmic scale is reminiscent of our historical experience on Earth, namely colonization and wars. There are a lot of reasons why people conquer and establish power over other nations. However, in most cases, such as during the colonization of Africa by the Europeans in the 19th century, the main motivation were land and natural resources. The rapid industrial development in Europe required more resources, which were abundant on another continent. Therefore, the colonization of Africa contributed to the development of European countries, but the African land and its population suffered from this expansion. The DFH offers the same colonial model as the reason why one civilization would attack another. We're still pursuing the goal of expansion for the continued survival of mankind, studying exoplanets and other star systems, and planning the colonization of Mars. The red planet is also rich in natural resources that are needed for technological development. Therefore, if we assume that another civilization pursues the same goals, we may have to fight for lands that could serve humanity. Otherwise, our survival would be under threat because, according to this hypothesis, survival and the necessary resources are crucial for the preservation of the species. In addition to the need to replenish a limited resource, there are other reasons for the aggressive behavior by civilizations. For example, as we've already said, the DFH introduces a concept known as the chain of suspicion. This concept is closely related to another aspect of this hypothesis, which is known as the technological explosion. The gist of the chain of suspicion is that it's impossible for civilizations to know whether others are benevolent or hostile. These doubts can lead to preemptive attacks and self-defense. According to the researcher Chow Yu, this chain can only emerge between civilizations with the same level of technological development, since they can likely objectively assess their own and other people's capabilities. 
Thus, if there is a significant gap in their respective levels of development, the chain cannot be formed. The technological explosion describes the ability of cosmic civilizations to make rapid scientific and technological leaps. A strong new hunter can pose a threat to others because advanced civilizations can start to be wary of him or seek to destroy him. However, Chow Yu points out that any invasion attempt could also harm the attacker, as other civilizations with similar or higher levels of advancement would be able to detect it, which would contribute to the chain of suspicion. However, in spite of the clear advantage in attacking other civilizations and in stealth, the DFH considers another scenario, benevolence. The point of benevolence is to refuse to attack other civilizations, even if they are detected, and they will probably be able to respond to the signal. In a dark forest, this tactic is very dangerous because it is again reinforced by the chain of suspicion. Found by a benevolent civilization, another civilization may turn out to be aggressive or rapidly developing. Therefore, in the future, it will be able to destroy others and survive, having collected enough resources, whereas the benevolent civilization will most likely cease to exist. If we assume that extraterrestrial life really exists and it is way more advanced than us, then it might attack us since this is a survival tactic with the highest chance of success. This is not the best news. So then, are there other ways for the events to unfold that are beneficial for Earth based on the dark forest hypothesis besides an attack on our planet? Let's look at this in terms of game theory. Number four, game theory and DFH. The point of game theory to learn how people make decisions based on certain conditions in order to achieve the best result. So let's imagine Earth as Civilization A and a more advanced alien life as Civilization B. Let's assume that B has picked up on our radio signal. Now B has three strategies for action. Attack, remain unnoticed but become suspicious, or respond with a prospect of possible friendship. Attack will be considered the most advantageous strategy, even if A is able to fight back. On the other hand, this scenario might turn out to be a losing one for B if A, according to researcher Alina Su, can send a signal in order to transmit the coordinates of the planet of Civilization B to other civilizations. Perhaps in this case, the best option would be to remain unnoticed. If both civilizations don't do anything, neither will benefit. On the one hand, this will save A and B from danger, but on the other hand, they won't be able to obtain the necessary resources. There's also an option to make friends. If both civilizations agree to an alliance, then one of them will benefit, for example, from the ability to use alien technology. The other civilization, the one that proposed friendship, would also be able to benefit, albeit slightly less. Does that mean that an alliance is the best scenario for both civilizations? Possibly, but it comes with some caveats. Firstly, benevolence, as you already know, is very dangerous because hypothetically, extraterrestrial civilizations are unlikely to be friendly too often. Secondly, the potential amount of resources that would be obtained even if a trade deal is established, it's less than what you would gain with a forced takeover. And so the theoretical attack on Earth has the highest probability, but this course of events can greatly harm the attacker. Still other civilizations may be afraid of the unknown military potential of Earth and therefore choose the tactics of secrecy or friendship. Five. The danger of sending signals into space. Does it mean that if the probability of Earth being conquered is higher than any other option, should we be wary of the propagation of our signal into space? According to DFH, messages to other civilizations could threaten our security, 
The same opinion is shared by many astrophysicists, including Stephen Hawking. After a breakthrough in space research in the middle of the last century, there was plenty of interest from scientists in the search for alien civilizations. In 1974, the famous Arecibo message was sent to a star cluster 21,000 light years away. Since that time, several radio messages have been launched into space, the latest of which dates back to 2017. Physicist Stephen Hawking believed that these messages could lead to the scenario described in the dark forest. According to him, an alien civilization visiting Earth could have the same consequences for us as the effects colonization of America had on its native inhabitants in the 15th century. Therefore, he expressed an opinion that this type of communication must be stopped. Nonetheless, other scientists, including SETI astrobiologist Douglas Vakoch, believe that the fear of sending messages can lead to Earth's isolationism. Moreover, Vakoch pointed out that the alien civilizations have had a chance to attack our planet while it was just developing, so you should not be afraid of the possibility of being heard by extraterrestrial life. Finally, the dark forest hypothesis also promotes the idea of differences in hunters' behavior. That is, not all alien civilizations would definitely attack us if they detected our signal. Additionally, a group of independent researchers led by the Global Catastrophic Risk Institute, Seth Baum, suggested that in addition to potentially dangerous civilizations, those with a lesser potential to harm us may also exist. They believe that there might be neutral civilizations that prefer to hide and not make contact, as well as civilizations that could establish a friendly relationship with Earth and help us solve global problems. In conclusion, the dark forest hypothesis is not the sole answer to the burning question, where is everyone? There are many other suggestions that attempt to explain the lack of a hint of extraterrestrial life, such as too great of a distance between civilizations, or the low likelihood of the emergence of other living organisms. Nevertheless, we cannot rule out the possibility of the veracity of Lu Shushin's theory, but we cannot confirm it either.